research and discovery. Futurists. An age-old chants passed down from father to son encourage the fishermen with their haul. Their traditional fishing methods have changed little over the centuries along the coast of Senegal. Two months ago we were fishing at night as we couldn't fish in the daytime as there weren't any fish. These days we've noticed there are far fewer. Amar has fished in these Atlantic waters for 40 years. Together with his fellow fishermen, he's after the fish called sardinella. Both flat and round sardinella are closely related to the herring and are considered a local delicacy. Today's catch is not that great. Once again, there are too few fish and many are far too small. When we were young, we saw lots of different kinds of fish, which these days we don't see anymore. It's a different era. We used to call some of these herrings four-metre fish as they were so big, but they've disappeared. Overfishing along the Senegalese coast, both by local fishermen and big foreign factory ships, is driving these sardinellas and dozens of other species to the brink of extinction. These scientists want to know how to prevent such an outcome. Every day they come down to the port to estimate the daily catch. By talking to the fishermen, they calculate how many boats sail, how much time they usually spend offshore, and then they measure some of the specimens. With our research, we're hoping to improve the management of resources, and to do that we must find out just how many fish are being caught and brought ashore. From this research we can estimate the extent of Senegal's fish stocks. After the catch is landed, I take a sample back to the laboratory to find out just when the fish would be likely to lay its eggs. In the lab, the fish are weighed and measured, and then their internal organs are studied. The sex of the fish can then be established. Scientists claim that overfishing of young, immature fish can drive a whole species to the brink of extinction. Morsilla wants to know if these fish were mature enough to have laid eggs at least once before being caught. It's by measuring these small calcified structures taken from the head that he can estimate the age of the fish. But what he sees worries him. If one looks at fish of 10 to 15 years ago and compares them with today, we can see that the fish being caught are smaller. It means we must reassess current fishing methods. Marine biologist Biran Essam supervises the research. It's hoped they'll be able to provide some solutions to the problem of overfishing. Some things can be done, such as the setting up of protected marine areas and leaving some dormant to allow reproduction. Perhaps we can also re-examine the mesh size of the nets being used. And we can introduce selective fishing rules. It's also vital we talk to the fishermen. They need to be aware that fish stocks can be there one minute and be on the decline the next. And that is what Morsilla is doing in Dakar's main fish market. Depending on the season, around four tons of fresh fish are sold here every day. He's brought a newly designed fish ruler, which can measure the minimal size for different Senegalese species. Fish smaller than the given length are considered immature by scientists. He chats with the fishermen, traders and customers. Today most of the sizes measured are OK, but this small white carp is judged to be five centimetres shorter than the average mature size. I was saying to this man, who's a local fish trader, that it's not a good idea to catch the small-sized fish. And why? Because the bigger fish have almost disappeared. And it's better to leave the fish to get to adulthood, otherwise if they're caught when smaller, we'll lose a generation. It's 
It's at this institute in northern Germany that the research in Senegal and in 20 other countries worldwide has been coordinated. The project's name has been abbreviated to Incofish. Its coordinator is Reiner Froster. The aquarium contains various European species at risk of overfishing, including the North Atlantic cod. He also says overfishing can be solved by just waiting to capture the more mature fish. The aim is to get the fishermen to leave the fish in the sea until they get to an optimum size, which is approximately half, even two-thirds of their final size. If one then catches them, it's less effort for the fishermen and it minimizes disruption to the fish population. We've published a study which shows that the populations at sea could be seven times larger if they were fished when they'd reached a reasonable size and the fishermen would receive the same economic benefit. Researchers here have used the fieldwork in Senegal and other countries to create a giant database with interactive maps and different fish rulers. Just by tapping in the name of a species, for example the sardinella fished in the Senegalese waters, the experts can learn about the fish's biology, its distribution and migratory habits. Maps show in red where the species is overexploited, priceless information to help create protected marine areas. We've known for 50 years how to manage fishing reasonably. The problem is more on a general level. At the moment the fish belong to anybody i.e. the person whose net catches the fish keeps them. If I say I want to catch the larger fish and I wait till they've grown, I won't catch anything as they've already been caught when they were smaller. It's vital to regulate the fishermen, force them to wait until the fish have reached a good size so that they can reproduce, while at the same time the fish have to attract a reasonable market price. Reasonable market prices, it's a key element and it's why the research project has also involved some of the biggest retailers. One year ago, sustainable fishing green labels started to be used in this supermarket in southern Germany. Green labels guarantee that the fish was caught at a mature age and is selling at a fair price. Many customers are now demanding that their fish come from sustainable sources. Indeed, customer reaction has been a mix of interest, curiosity and distrust. Up to a point I'm prepared to pay more, but fish is already expensive and relatively rare. Prices should be kept in proportion. For me, it doesn't matter if these sustainable fish are more or less expensive. What really matters is that it's good quality and fresh fish. The retailer's purchase manager thinks sustainable fishing will indeed be the only way to guarantee affordable prices for fresh fish in the future. In the long run, we don't think that sustainable fishing is more expensive. On the contrary, it's more advantageous. Prices on the worldwide market will escalate if we don't implement acceptable fishing methods. As the oceans emptied, supply and demand of the overfished resource would produce a price explosion. Far from the European supermarkets along the Senegalese coast, scientists think that the collapse of fish stocks by overfishing can be avoided, provided that all those concerned acknowledge their responsibilities. We're talking about a renewable resource. It's not like oil or gold. It's necessary to make the world's fishermen recognize that. And they are. They're becoming increasingly aware and they're becoming better organized. They know their own survival depends on it. To kill the small fish is not good. When we catch the small ones, we know that we've caught nothing.